Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Welcome to Speak for Yourself. Jason Whitlock, Marcellus Wiley, on a Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for joining us again. Marcellus, you just dropped some news on me right before the show. Ba- the baby is now coming on Thursday. A big week for you coming up, huh? Yeah, man. Big Papa is going to add another one. So some more madness to this home, but another blessing, another joy. And little girl's coming. I can tell you the name right now. Her name's Olivia, coming this week. Wow, that's awesome. I was just reading something this morning about fatherhood, and, and that's just awesome, man, the family you built. And congratulations on Thursday. Hope everything goes well. But let's get to it. This is the place to talk sports, the place to talk football. And we have some more Tom Brady news. This story about Tom Brady brought to you by Popeye's Chicken Sandwich today at his introductory press conference in Tampa Bay, Brady had to do it over the telephone. He was very reluctant to speak any about any disappointment about having to leave the New England Patriots. Take a listen for yourself. No, I have a great deal of respect for, you know, there's nobody who's been a bigger fan of the New England Patriots than me. So um, I have nothing but total respect and love and, uh, you know, I'm so grateful to Mr. Kraft and the organization and Coach Belichick. That's what Brady had to say if he was asked, if, the, if he was disappointed if the Patriots didn't make a bigger effort to retain him. And after listening to Brady's press conference today, I just came to the conclusion that not just Bill Belichick was ready to move on, Tom Brady was re- ready to move on equally. And I think this happens a lot of times in a lot of relationships Maybe there's one side of the party. Maybe it's the man. Maybe it's the woman. Maybe it's the wife. Maybe it's the husband. Somebody decides first, you know what? I'm kind of over this. And maybe that was Belichick a few years ago when he tried to trade Tom Brady. But Tom Brady got right there in equality with, with Bill Belichick in terms of wanting to be done with this. I think both of these guys we're ready for this thing to be over, and that's why Brady was reluctant to take any pot shots. He didn't want to talk about the past. He's ready to move on with his new relationship with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Marcellus, you agree with me? They were both ready to move on from this? They both were ready to move on. Uh, Bill Belichick more so than Tom Brady because Bill Belichick has been here before. Uh, Bill Belichick knows what Tom Brady is feeling right now because he used to be Tom Brady. Uh, unheralded special teams coach, defensive assistant who finally got his chance, big chance as a defensive coordinator with Bill Parcells, and to have his greatness always in tow with Bill Parcells, whether it's being overshadowed or just hits to Bill Parcells' greatness. And Bill Belichick finally wanted to go out, fly away from the nest and see what he could do. He was a losing coach in Cleveland, had to come back to the New England Patriots and become a coordinator once again for the Bill Parcells. And then he goes out and has to follow Bill Parcells as a Jets coach. And he's like, ah, enough of this. It's time for me to go out and seek my own independent legacy. So he knew Tom Brady one day would come to this same moment where he wants to seek his own independent legacy. Bill Belichick wanted this before this moment. Tom Brady came to this realization once he didn't feel the exact amount of love he desired in his workplace and what he deserved because of his success. I'm going to nitpick you a little bit because you said Bill Belichick wanted it more. I agree with you. Bill Belichick wanted it first. But I think Tom Brady got there just as passionately. Once he realized, hey, you know what? This guy isn't as into me as he once was, I think he met Bill Belichick's enthusiasm 
in the last year, year or a year and a half, he met Bill, uh, Bill Belichick's enthusiasm to get the hell out of New England and go prove. And, and again, I think this is a mistake on Tom Brady's part, but I think he equally wanted out of New England. That's why he didn't make some great effort. If he had gone to Robert Kraft's house and said, hey, man, well, man, we got 20 years. Let's do 22. Let's make it happen by any means necessary. It, this relationship would have continued. But instead, I think Tom Brady was like, man, I'm just like Belichick. I'm over this. I'm done with it. The kids are grown. Gronk's moved out of the house to college. Uh, Randy <laughs> Moss is in the Hall of Fame. Ty Law's in the Hall of Fame. Willie McGinnis, Teddy Bruce, he got great TV careers. We raised all of our kids. Hey, the bad kid went to jail, Aaron Hernandez, and he's gone. <laughs> I think just like a lot of married couple, this was an empty nest household, and they looked at each other and said, you know what? I'm going to go get me a pretty young thing or something new. Mm. I'm over this. I think Tom Brady, just as much as Belichick, not for, I agree with you, he wasn't first, but he's right there with Belichick in like, let, let's, let me do something else. Ah, look, I, I will agree that they matched enthusiasm, but they got their different times and they got their different ways. Uh, he, Bill Belichick was able to freeze Tom Brady's heart over. And Tom Brady still had love for the Patriots, still had love for that position, that title of being the GOAT and the quarterback of the Patriots. But what happened was Bill Belichick stopped returning those phone calls. And when he did pick up the phone, he wasn't as warm as Tom Brady remembered. So Tom Brady arrived at this place, but Bill Belichick was the one encouraging Tom Brady to even come to the same realization he did, which is it's okay to go out there and figure out how great you can become without someone else overshadowing you. So that Bill Parcells relationship, which really fueled Bill Belichick in many a ways, if you really dive into his resume, you can realize that he knew one day that Tom Brady was going to have to get to the same point. Prematurely, some thought that Bill Belichick looked at Tom Brady as a has-been. This was in 2017, and Tom Brady has won a Super Bowl since then, but Bill Belichick stopped answering the phone with the same warmth and the same understanding that he once did. Listen, we've been talking about this for months. Let's try to put a bow on it. Uh, Brady's had his press conference in Tampa Bay. So let me ask you, and we've asked this a million times, but let's ask it one more time. If you had to say someone's making a mistake by ending this relationship, who's going to get into this divorce and have regret in 2020? I'm not talking about 2021 or 22. In 2020, when that season kicks off, who's going to have the most regret? Absolutely, it's going to be Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. They're going to realize that it's a team game, and as great as Tom Brady is, you have to dress him up with the proper resources in terms of weapons and receivers and, and the proper running game and, and the defense all in coordination for Tom Brady to be at his best. So what they're going to come to realize is no matter who's under center, good or bad, no matter who's out there in their weapons, that it's a coordinated effort. And that realization is going to make them realize it wasn't all on Tom Brady. I think right now, when you do your assessment of the Patriots, they were 12 and 14, kind of glossy. But then you look at Tom Brady and you start to nitpick without fully realizing he didn't have weapons. He had a 35-year-old Julian Edelman coming off PEDs because he realizes he doesn't have much left. That was his number one target. So I think all of those things are going to come into understanding when the season starts, and they're going to realize, ooh, we let a good one go. All right, I got to admit, I've been all over the map on this one. I, I tend to think Brady's going to miss these guys a little more. But, and again, I'm actually leaning today in this moment that Belichick in 2020 is going to miss Brady more. And, I, and it's because of the culture. I was reading something Mike Lombardi wrote this week that I thought was really good. I, I think it was yesterday or this morning that was really good about the relationship and how Brady was central to creating that culture that they have in New England. 
certainly Bill Belichick deserves the credit for coming up with the recipe. But damn it, Tom Brady was right there in that kitchen with him, cooking up that culture, mm-hmm. bought into it, was a willing servant of that culture for 20 years and helped set that tone. I think Brady's value in terms of going to special teams meetings, allowing Belichick to coach him like he was a special teams player. It's no different than what Greg Popovich found when Tim Duncan walked away, when Manu Ginobili, when Tony Parker, when that big three it with the San Antonio Spurs, and the next thing you know, Pop is having to lean into Kawhi, and no shot at Kawhi, but he's different than Tim Duncan. He's not a part of that culture, and things didn't go well. Greg Popovich, arguably the best coach in the NBA since Red Allback, or right there, or certainly right there with Phil Jackson. And they had a culture Phil in Jackson. San Antonio that Popovich hasn't been able to duplicate since Tim Duncan left. I think removing Tom Brady from this culture in 2020, Bill Pars- Bill Belichick's going to be sitting there like, mm, I need Tom in this kitchen cooking with me. This lasagna don't taste the same. All right, let's move on to the Indianapolis Colts, who we've learned have made a very interesting decision. They Tom Brady had interest in the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts didn't have interest in Tom Brady, seemingly, they chose Philip Rivers at a one-year deal rather than potentially Tom Brady coming into the house that Peyton Manning built. Marcellus, is it crazy that the Colts chose Philip Rivers over Tom Brady? Not crazy at all. This is smart football right here. Uh, one, the familiarity, obviously, and the head coach, Frank Reich, who was in San Diego with Philip Rivers for three years, and uh, 2013 especially stands out because Philip Rivers was the comeback player of the year, and that was under Frank Reich as his offensive coordinator. Now, you have to respect that familiarity, that relationship, because when you start to get into a short-term deal, whether it was a one-year deal with Philip Rivers or the consideration of Tom Brady for a couple of years, you need to hit the ground running, especially in the conditions that this entire world is dealing with with the coronavirus, you need to have familiarity. I think that was a large part of why Phillip Rivers had the leg up over Tom Brady. But also, you brought up the house that Peyton Manning built, and then Peyton Manning is asked to depart, and then you bring in his arch nemesis and Tom Brady. That just didn't fit conveniently. And for people out there who keep looking down at Phillip Rivers, he's not a slouch. Fun fact for you all, he actually had a higher passer rating than Tom Brady did last year, despite Tom Brady throwing for more touchdowns and fewer interceptions. But Phillip Rivers had a higher completion percentage and greater yards per attempt. So Phillip Rivers hasn't fallen off the cliff as advertised. I think it was a smart move by the Colts. Uh, Phillip Rivers has fallen off a cliff, and Tom Brady would have loved to have had Keenan Allen and a bunch of the other weapons in San Diego or in Los Angeles with the charges that Phillip Rivers had. I do think it's a bit crazy not to kick the tires on this, to show no interest. When you show no interest, that to me says Jim Irsay, the owner of the Colts, was kind of leaning into, man, can we really let Tom Brady come to Peyton Manning's house with that... I I don't think he felt like that would land well with hardcore uh, sports fans uh, in Indianapolis or their continuing relationship with Peyton Manning. We still don't know what Peyton Manning is going to do post-career. One day, Peyton Manning may be the president of the Indianapolis Colts. Who knows? And maybe uh, Jim Irsay, the owner of the Colts, didn't want to take that risk of bringing Tom Brady into his arch rival's stadium, uniform, jersey, the whole nine yards. But I I do think the Colts made a a mistake here. If you have a chance to get Tom Brady for two years, with that roster you built, with that offensive line you built, with that chance, the Colts, in their mind, are a win-now Super Bowl team. Phillip Rivers over Tom Brady? That is crazy to me. Muscle pain? I'm talking stop in your tracks, I'll never work out again, oh my God, what am I going to do kind of pain? This is the kind of pain Dr. Jason Wurzlin was in when he created Theragun. 
the deep muscle massager that's unlike anything you've ever felt. Theragun isn't a cheap massager that just tickles your muscles. Our handheld percussive device uses a scientifically calibrated combination of speed, depth, and power to release the deepest muscle tension. It's this simple. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just everyday life, you can use Theragun. Theragun is the preferred muscle recovery device for over 250 professional sports teams and is used by hundreds of thousands of satisfied customers around the world to reduce pain, increase range of motion, and soothe aching muscles. Try Theragun risk-free for 30 days or your money back by going to theragun.com slash cadence. For a limited time, listeners who speak for yourself get a free charging stand with the purchase, a $79 value. That's theragun.com slash cadence. That's T-H-E-R-A-G-U-N dot com slash cadence. C-A-D-E-N-C-E. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Jason Whitlock, Marcellus Wiley, coming to you from our homes here in Los Angeles. All right, Speak for Yourself presented by Hyundai. All right, joining us now on the phone is LeVar Arrington, former NFL star, LeVar, you just heard uh, Marcellus and I chop it up about Brady and Belichick. All right, who do you think was more right? Marcellus thinks Belichick wanted Brady gone a little bit more than Brady wanted to be gone. I, I, think, you're, I think you're right on this one, Whit. I think he, he did want, Belichick did want Tom Brady gone longer. But I do believe that Tom Brady eventually came to the realization that he wanted to be gone just as much as Bill Belichick didn't want him there. All right, let's go to your former hometown, Washington, D.C., the Washington Redskins. Ron Rivera, Marcellus, his first move as head coach, as a related big move, is to trade a fifth-round pick for Kyle Allen, the former quarterback of the Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton's former backup. You think this move by Ron Rivera to make a move for Kyle Allen when Cam Newton's on the market, does that say anything about what Ron Rivera thinks about Cam Newton? Oh, man, big fan of Ron Rivera. But once you become the coach of the Washington Redskins, uh, which way is up in terms of really knowing if this is a smart move or not a smart move? Maybe Cam has escaped what a lot of people have not escaped, including our own LeVar Arrington, which is what, what happens when you become a part of this organization? Usually success doesn't follow. That said, I think this is an indictment on Cam Newton in this respect. Let's all go back to even Cam at his peak powers. We all sat there, even the biggest fans of Cam Newton, as I am one, sat there and started to add up all the awkward laughter that was surrounding him, which is... People counting and adding up how much they're putting up with you just because of your greatness. But remember, those people who add that up, sooner than later, cash that in. And I think this is that moment that they're cashing in all of the times that they had to put up with awkward leadership from Cam Newton. Not necessarily a guy who can inspire all or lead all in the way that he went about his business. I think this is just a coming home moment for all those critics and naysayers who may have had to stay silent for so many years, but now are speaking loudly against Cam. LeVar? You know, for me, I, I think it's more so it becomes clearer and clearer that it's his health. Uh, we could talk about all of the, the things that, you know, maybe Cam butted heads with coaches or maybe could, uh, could have been a better leader. We, we can question all of those things. The one thing that is the biggest question as it stands right now is how durable is Cam Newton? We know that he, he, you know, the reports are coming out that he has passed his physical. Let me tell you something. When I was in New York, I passed my physical to become a New York Giant. You know how long my health held up for? Five games, all right? So when you say oh, a guy has passed his, his physical, he's good to go, guys should take him, that's not necessarily true. And we continue to hear that owner say, talk to me when he's healthy. When we hear about him being healthy, you come talk to me. They made a move in Carolina because of Cam Newton's health. Ron Rivera made a move on Kyle Allen because that is the best decision you can make with a backup slash possible starter to come in if Haskins is indeed the guy that people think he is and can't sustain a starting job. 
I think it's more so about the necessity of I know Kyle Allen is available. I know that I can use him in a starting situation if that calls for it. And Cam Newton, I just cannot hang my reputation or where I'm at now as a new head coach, knowing him and knowing where he's at currently on on his health. Totally disagree with you, LeVar, because I, I think Kyle Allen proved last year that he's a flash in the pan. You got to remember, this is an undrafted guy who didn't have much of a college career or, you know, he's a five-star recruit coming out of high school, didn't have the kind of college career that he thought he was, undrafted guy. Kyle Allen proved that he can be a spot starter in the NFL. I think they probably gave up too much to get him. But, okay, if he, if Ron Rivera believes in him that much in terms of helping establish the culture, and he's a guy that I like and respect, but I don't think the Redskins have made any commitment to any quarterback, Haskins, Kyle Allen, anything like that. And so I do see this as an indictment of Cam because, trust me, if Cam's mind was right, if Ron Rivera trusted him as a locker room guy, as a leader, as a chemistry guy, I think they would have made some sort of move for Cam Newton just on the off chance that he is able to recover his health. The upside is so enormous that you would have to make that move because Cam has proven he can be an MVP of this league. He can be a guy that can take you to a Super Bowl. Kyle Allen, Dwayne Haskins, Hell no, neither one of those guys. I, I, I cert- If I'm Ron Rivera, I'm not all in on Dwayne Haskins, and I could care less if the owner is. I'm a brand new coach. I'm not going to be attached to some uh, quarterback that I didn't draft. And I think, again, Kyle Allen's proven he's not a full-time starter in this league. I still think the Redskins coach. go after Tua Tung Viola, and, and I do think all of this is in an indictment of Cam and what Ron Rivera thinks about him as a locker room leader. Anybody else want to respond before we move on? Yeah, man. You know, it's crazy that we need to all acknowledge how we're inserting more variables into the evaluation of players. It's style of play. It's style of leadership. All these style points, instead of the protected holy ground, which sports and that football field should represent, which is just for ballers. So no longer are we in that meritocracy or that that pure evaluation of who's the better player. Uh, We're not talking about a criminal here. We're not talking about someone who has a a long rap sheet or issues of that nature. We're talking about a guy that is clearly better than everyone in that room if you add him up. And he's still jobless right now because of other attributes that we are inserting into the equation when we evaluate these prospects which is unfortunate to me and why you see some teams like a Washington that's just hanging around 500 for so many years because they don't do the purest evaluation and get the best guys. That's 100 percent. Right, LeVar, we don't have time for no, LeVar, we don't have time for you to respond. Yeah. I oh, want to say oh. this. Cam Newton just officially released by the Carolina Panthers. He's been moved on from. I will say this, Marcellus. Those evaluations, those other things are what coaches and executives do to all employees, whether in football, television, uh, cab drivers, whatever. Let's move on to this, though, because I think that's a perfect segue, what you said, into our Cam Newton and Jameis Winston, both available. I'm just wondering if at some point will the media, the woke media that loves to play the race card a lot of times, (laughs) if they're going to make something of the fact that one, Cam Newton, a former MVP, Jameis Winston, former number one pick, got through the most passing yards in the league last year. Will the woke media make a big deal about Cam and Jameis both being jobless? I don't think so. I don't think the woke media is even going to wake up for this one. I think the sleep media, uh, the other side, is going to even <laughs> scratch their head and say, Cam Newton doesn't have a job? Like... Okay, we all know the numbers. There's 32 starting quarterbacks, and Cam Newton's one of the best 32 quarterbacks walking this planet. We get it. So he deserves that situation. But this is not Colin Kaepernick or anything of that nature. This is simply bad optics for the NFL, for Carolina, for any team out there that doesn't really look at Cam Newton as a suitable starter if if they're not already in that position. We have basically submitted to the optics that Matt Rule could come from college 
get a contract that's worth $70 million and then give him the power to release a Cam Newton to the streets? Woke, sleep, I don't care what media you're a part of. You got to scratch your head at that one. LeVar? You know, I, I think woke media will jump on it because it's an easy target to jump on. You, you're not landing an airplane on a stamp in pitch black. This is, this is a very nice landing strip. So I think it does turn into a story <laughs> based upon racial, racial lines. But the reality here, and I'm going to stay where I'm at with Cam. Cam is going to want to be a starting quarterback. I'm not bringing in, first of all, there's very few slots available in the NFL for a starter as it stands right now. I'm not taking a chance on bringing in a guy that I don't know is going to be able to maintain his health going into the season. It's just not a prudent and wise move. That's for one. As it applies to Jameis, it's almost the same in the sense that Jameis is not going to want to come in in a backup role. All right. When you look at the situation, Cam is just now being released. Jameis being released. Everybody's not, you know, nobody's going to use uh, trade bait because you know that you're going to release those guys. So now it comes back to Cam's health and it comes back to do I think that Jameis can be a starter? I think Jameis gets on to a team, but the question is, is he brought in as a starter or is he brought in as a guy that can compete for the starting job but will start off as a backup? I think that it's just as much as something to do with Jameis in this situation and possibly Cam just as much as it does the teams that may possibly want to sign them. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally, uh, LeVar. I lived this situation with Jeff George in his early 30s. He got into a situation where he was so talented that he was too talented to bring in as a backup. Because if the guy sitting behind the guy you've committed to as a starter is throwing a better ball in every practice than the guy you got sitting out there as a starter, that can create dissension inside your locker room. With Cam Newton and Jameis Winston, but particularly with Cam Newton, I'm telling you, in shorts and, and a shoulder pads and just throwing the football around and, and, and in practice, he's probably going to look better than most of your starters. There's people talking about... Uh, Jameis Winston, he'd be a good choice to be a backup in Dallas. That's high risk. If he's backing up uh, Dak Prescott, he's got a better arm than Dak Prescott. He's got a better college career than Dak Prescott. He's more talented than Dak Prescott, and there's a chance his decision-making in practice will make him look like potentially a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. That's where fit is going to be a big deal for both of these guys and what they say in an interview with coaches. Can I think it's going to be very difficult for Cam Newton to accept being a backup quarterback. I think there's a shot that Jameis Winston can wrap his mind around being a backup somewhere. But, but where is that fit? Because there's a bunch of young quarterbacks coming into this draft. There's some more following them the next year. There's a lot of teams that feel good about their quarterback situation, there's not a lot of opportunity. I think Cam and Jameis would both be more talented than Tyrod Taylor. Mm. But I Marcel, yeah, Jameis, does, does obviously. Anthony Lynn want to... I'm saying Jameis obviously him. could accept the backup role. That's obvious. Like, listen, th there's no shock to the soul of Jameis Winston if he has to accept the backup role for a year or so. But that would devastate Cam Newton, and it's really unfortunate, unfair. I, w I want you guys to travel with me to this parallel universe. As we keep putting up this, this graphic that shows Cam Newton 0-2 last time we saw him on the field in 2019, which is really unfortunate because Cam Newton, if he didn't play at all last year, because the injury happened in the preseason, so imagine he doesn't play at all. Then what we have as reference last time seen was a 6-2 and two Cam Newton who was an MVP candidate. Only bring that up because we're talking about Tom Brady who missed an entire season. And when he came back, it wasn't an injury-prone conversation. It was, oh, he's back. And, and Cam Newton is younger than a Tom Brady at the time of, of if, if injury. So all I'm saying is Cam Newton is not going to be able to reconcile all these variables and accept him as a backup in the NFL. He's going for a start gig. 
Every night, local police departments across America receive hundreds of calls from burglar alarms. The vast majority of the time, they have no idea whether the alarm is real. Is there really a crime going on or not? All the alarm company can tell them is the motion sensor went off. Simply Safe Home Security is different. There's a break in. Simply Safe uses real video evidence to give police an eyewitness account of the crime. That means police dispatch up to 350% faster than for a normal burglar alarm. Plus, Simply Safe protects your home from fires, water damage, and carbon monoxide poisoning. It's 24 7 monitoring by live security professionals. You can set up your system yourself, no tools needed, or Simply Safe can do it for you. It's only 50 cents a day with no contracts. Visit simplysafe.com slash speak. You'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. You've got nothing to lose. Go now and be sure you go to simplysafe.com slash speak so they know our show sent you. That's simplysafe.com slash speak. It's the My guy, my guy. My question, question, question of the day. All right, welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Jason Whitlock, Marcellus Wiley, live to you from our homes here in Los Angeles. All right, it's time now for Darnell's question of the day. Darnell, take it away, homeboy. Yes, sir. Let's talk about my guy, Peyton Manning, who just turned 44 today. Happy birthday. Everyone's been trying to hire the coach legend since he retired, but Peyton just turned down another job, saying no to Monday Night Football for the second year in a row. Last year, Peyton said he didn't want the job because Eli was still playing. But now Eli's retired and he still turned it down. Monday Night Football used to be a huge deal, but the Broncos have been struggling in recent years. So I want to ask you guys, do you think it can be fixed? Monday Night Football, can it be Look. fixed? Yes. <laughs> yes, I think it can. Uh, I think it's going to be hard, though. I, I think that... Uh, just speaking transparently, I think ESPN had, uh, under John Skipper, had created an environment that was pretty hostile to football. And I think they're digging out from underneath that. And so, I, you know, uh, I think they've been trying to fix their Monday night football problem. And that would be the beginning of fixing their football problem and they took some big swings at Tony Romo and Peyton Manning, and I think that was appropriate for those for them to take those swings. But now I think they may have to go another direction and fix their football problem first and make ESPN a, a better place to celebrate the game of football, and then it'll be easier for them to hire a big-name person to head up their Monday Night Football deal but, but I really think that ESPN has a problem celebrating the game of football. There's a lot of people there with a hostility towards football. They've been trying to clean it up and clean them out, uh, and they need to continue on that path. Valid points. Valid points. Uh, personally, I don't think that it's broken. Uh, I don't think that it needs this fix. I think what's happening is all of these changes are giving the perception that something is broken and needs to be fixed. I'm not a guy who has to watch the game on mute. I'm not one of these people that's on Twitter while the game is still going on, commenting negatively about all the commentating that they're hearing and missing the game while they're doing that. I will say this, that sometimes when you have all this turnover, this, this change, that it, it's the guy who continues to date and girlfriend after girlfriend. No matter what you think of the guy, you have to question Hey, is everything all right? Something wrong with you? And I've been that guy before. I've been engaged four times. Everybody thought I had a problem because I just kept moving on, kept moving on. But guess what? I'm fine. Look at me right now. The point of this is that sometimes the perception doesn't necessarily map on with the reality. Um, they have a, a very adequate crew. Is it the best crew in the world? Is Romo on that crew? No. But even Romo took hell and fire before he became Romo Stradamus. Like, before that, he was the guy that they were like outsider coming in. So I even think if you acquire Peyton Manning, we going to chew him up and spit him out in the beginning as well. This is what happens. You get Peyton Manning there. You say, I thought he was funnier than that because you only got slices of Peyton Manning before. Now you're going to have him every week for three straight hours. I just think the same thing happened with the Rams logo and its new unveiling. 
People are destroying it because it's something different and something new. I think that's what ESPN is really falling victim to. Marcellus, I'm going to go all the way there with you because uh, I agree with your sentiment. And that's, it doesn't disregard my previous comments, but I agree with your sentiments. I'm a huge Booger McFarlane fan. Huge. When Booger McFarlane uh, was doing a radio show late nights, I, I, I went on Sundays or on Mondays after NFL Sundays. I used to drive home from Las Vegas and be like, man, Booger McFarlane, I, I, I love this dude. And for, it slipped in my mind. He was partnered with a guy uh, who I follow as well on Twitter, but I can't recall his name right now. But I like both of them. Booger, to me, was brought out of the oven a little too soon. I th- and, and what you're basically saying is, hey, man, give Booger, Joe Tessitore, time to grow. That may be the solution, and that is kind of what I'm talking about in terms of you're trying to fix your Monday night football pro, uh, problem, and my suggestion is, no, uh, fix your uh, Sunday through Saturday problem or uh, the other six days of the <laughs> week. Let Booger and Joe Tessitore continue to evolve and grow. I think Booger has some talent. I think he did struggle. He's a young guy, first time doing this, but I think he has a lot of talent. And I tend to agree with, with you, Marcellus. Our criticism is perhaps a bit over the top because the expectations for Monday Night Football are very high. And let's just be honest, Troy Aikman, uh, Chris Collinsworth, uh, Tony Romo, these guys, and, and Romo just as a rookie coming in or early in his career, have set a bar so high that I think it's very hard for anybody to meet that at this time. And you may just have to let some young people grow up on the job and see where they go from there. That might be the best solution. Yeah, don't forget that while raising the bar that high, that we were killing them while they were raising the bar that high. And that's what happened. So you can't chase your tail on these situations. You have to groom them. You have to have conviction and allow it to blossom. People always criticize Booger, who I love, Joe. I used to call games with Joe in the Arena League in 2007. So I've certainly seen maturation from all parties involved. But people say, oh, they state the obvious. They're oversimplifying the game. Oh, like John Madden didn't used to tell you that two guys hit each other and go boom, like in Batman movies. Like, we get it. And he's one of the greatest. So why don't we endear the same guys and adore what they're doing? Or at least be patient with your criticism because you're going to look foolish and have to eat the crow sooner than later. I do want to make this offer to Peyton Manning. Uh, we would gladly replace Darnell with Peyton Manning. And oh, uh, Peyton man. can be questioned the day here on Speak for Yourself. <laughs> be come on, come man. Hey, we all go so to Peyton. That offer is out all there for you. Uh, <laughs> all right, stick around. All right, welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Jason Whitlock, Marcellus Wiley, live from our homes in Los Angeles. All right, we're about to be joined by a guy, Rick Buecher. I think he's in the Bay Area. Rick, welcome to the show. Let's get right to it. Uh, ESPN polled a bunch of media members, I think 70 media members, on who their uh, NBA MVP is. And like 60 of them said Giannis Antetokounmpo over LeBron James. This shocks the hell out of me. Marcellus, we'll start with you. We'll start with Marcellus. Do you think LeBron has made up ground on Giannis? Are you shocked by this poll? Not shocked at all. I've been saying this uh, from day one that Giannis has such a lead on LeBron. And it was unfortunate that people are really trying to close that distance by not paying careful attention to Giannis, who's having a greater season than he did last year when he won the MVP the first time. So if you don't watch track and field carefully, if you're eating nachos and talking to the kids and then watch a long distance race, you know what you will see? Sometimes runners are this close to each other, but the one in the back actually lapped the other one already. So they're not on the same lap. LeBron had a great weekend before the coronavirus hit and everyone started getting into their poetry and English lit and all the love that they have and all of the little asterisks that they kept 
putting into this conversation to close that gap. I'm glad that at least these anonymous media members went out there and cleared up the air. I can only tell you that I'm not one of the 70 that they talked to because I had, as of right now, LeBron James being the MVP of the league. And to Marcellus's point, when you look at races, we have to look at where the starting point was. And the starting point being this Lakers team wasn't supposed to be the best team in the Western Conference by any, by any stretch. And yet they are by a long shot. And they're only three games back of overall records against the Milwaukee Bucks. It comes down to how you define MVP. And for me, it's part of it is the most indispensable. I've seen the Milwaukee Bucks perform and be successful without Giannis Antetokounmpo. The Lakers simply are a completely different team without LeBron James. They can't get what he gives them from any place else. And when I look at what he's accomplished with this group, he's my most valuable player. And by the way, the whole idea of Giannis having a better year than last year, Steve Nash's best year was the year that he didn't win MVP because they didn't want to give it to him three times in a row. So I don't know that I'm going to look at it as a carryover from one year to the next. Uh, Rick, I, have a problem I just want to say Rick, the church just because, say amen. Oh, hold on, Marcel. Let the church say amen. Rick no, just no, took no. us to church. I ain't going to church. Preached the hell of a sermon. <laughs> I just caught the holy basketball ghost because, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm allegedly a LeBron critic, and sometimes I am. But the man is the MVP, Marcellus. I don't know what you're watching. And yes, I watch sporting events while overeating on nachos, hot dogs, and whatever else I can get my hands on. But I know what an MVP looks like, and it's LeBron James this year. And it's and the reason why is because Giannis got exposed in last year's playoffs. What he does in the regular season doesn't translate to the highest level of competition in the NBA. We saw it in that All-Star game in the fourth quarter when those guys played playoffs level <laughs> basketball and they shut Giannis down. Giannis is a great regular season player. LeBron is an MVP, a most valuable player. Give the man his just rewards. These 60 people that won't jump off Giannis are crazy. Now the floor is yours, Marcellus. Wow, you really should have let me interrupt you so you could have saved yourself from all those points <laughs> that you just gave me more ammo. Um, one, you, you guys keep using last year for this year's MVP, which is absurd. Or more absurd is the fact that you use an exhibition game called the All-Star Game as more evidence for the MVP. And then... And it's Slick Rick the Buker. I love you so much, but man, you're smarter than that to sit there and say, in absence, you prove how valuable you are to a team. Because if that's the case, then Kevin Durant is this year's MVP for leaving the Warriors. Or Steph Curry for just getting hurt this year is the MVP. Because that's the sorriest team I've ever seen, despite ha having great players from a high and then the absence of those guys and now the low. This is not about starting points. This is not about expectations. You take Devin Booker off the Suns, is he the MVP? We're not having that conversation. We're having a conversation, who's playing the best basketball? And LeBron is sharing that experience with Anthony Davis, who some people, even in the building, say Anthony Davis is the driving force of the Lakers this year, as LeBron has deferred Is this Clipper Darrell or words? a co-host to speak for yourself talking right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to bring some objectivity to this conversation because I look, I am not a fan of of people coming into conversations and starting to bring other attributes and qualifiers. No one wants to hear, hey, Jason Whitlock, you're a handsome man for a guy over 50 who's from Indiana who lives in the Wilshire Corridor. Now, who wants to hear all that? That's what y'all doing to LeBron. He's playing great for a 35-year-old in his 17th season for the Lakers. I don't want to hear that. Hold on, but you're, but you're saying that Giannis uh, should get it because he's playing even better statistically than he did last year. How is that not bringing in outside elements beyond what a guy's doing right now? And you, what you demonstrated is we're operating on different definitions of most valuable player. You're saying 
best player, best player in the game right now. That to me is not necessarily Rick, most valuable. Most we're valuable gonna call you tomorrow. Let you keep going. Away, we got to get out of here. Uh, Uncle I've Jimmy's gonna them, kill me. I got to save a little time for Uncle Jimmy, Rick. We're done, Rick. MVP threshold. We gotta go. Speak for yourself. Uncle Jimmy and our approval radio, Tom Brady. Out the frame. Out the frame. All right, welcome back to Speak for Yourself. Jason Whitlock, Marcellus Wiley. All right, time now for our favorite time of the day. My uncle, Uncle Jimmy, joining the program. You got some thoughts on uh, Tom Brady, Uncle Jimmy? You know I do. Hey, man, let me tell y'all what, man. (laughs) All this Botox is getting to Tom Brady's brain. You understand what I'm trying to say, man? (laughs) Ain't no way in hell you're supposed to leave the New England Patriots after 20 years, go to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then brag about it. You understand what I'm trying to say? That's like me getting fired from Fox, going back to Kansas City, getting hired by the Sheriff's Department, and holding a sher- and holding a press conference bragging about it. That's nothing to brag about, man. What the hell's wrong with you? Huh? The boys stupid, Tampa Bay's stupid, better than that. Wait a minute. It sounded like that thing you was with during the quarantine. It's nothing to brag about. <laughs> Don't put my business out there. <laughs> like she did. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be. What's going on in this house? All right, Uncle Jimmy, sure we got to go. We got to get to our approval ready. <laughs> the internet has Tom Brady in GOAT status. Like 72%. I've got him at a 76. Almost go status, not quite, up two points. Yeah, man. Uh, go status for me as well. Only only thing is, the character, come on, Tom Brady, tell the exact truth. You were tired of being there, tired of being a whooping boy. It's time to go on, do your own thing. Respect. All right, fantastic show today. Awesome Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe, America.